My fave! Yay! Oh my goodness, it's time for hummus curry. Oh, it's bonkers, but trust me, it's <laughs> so good. Hello everyone, welcome back. Oh my goodness, have we got some good recipes for you. Today we're going to be showing you six big batch cooking recipes. That's a proper tongue twister. It really is quite hard to say. Now we've put this video together because we're living in interesting times. Quarantine is very, very real for people all over the world. So these are some recipes for you to cook in big batches, which is going to help you out. So you can make this with your stock cupboard ingredients, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Of course you can switch things out. We have got for you today the Spanish bean stew. We've got a wonderful shepherd's pie. Hearty herby stew. Braised jack chili. The Indian spiced tomato soup. And my favorite, hummus curry. It is an absolute stormer. The last one is probably the best, so make sure you watch right till the end. Now let's get into it. So first up, it's Spanish bean stew, and look at how hearty and warm that looks. Oh, that looks absolutely delicious. Yes, goodness gracious Now me. what is that? Hmm, well, if you watch to the end of the video, you shall find out. Now, first up in the recipe, we use sun-dried tomato oil because it's kind of zero waste. You use what's in the jar. A little bit of onion, of course. So many recipes start with onion. Mm. We've got the sun-dried tomatoes going in, and of course, garlic. We love a bit of garlic, and sun-dried tomatoes are kind of a bit bacony, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. The tomato puree is going to add that sweetness, that gorgeous colour, and go perfectly with those cherry tomatoes. Now, you don't have to use cherry tomatoes in this instance. You could use chopped tomatoes. It would be fine. Of course, we've used paprika and chilli flakes because we love a bit of heat, don't mm -hmm. we? But you can use whatever you've got lying around in your cupboards. And talking about your cupboards, Bolotti beans just went in there and another one, but you can use any beans that you want at all. Kidney beans would be wicked. This is a proper store cupboard recipe. It's quick and look how delicious it looks already. Yeah, I think here you just want to simmer it nice and low, nice and slow, let all those flavours develop and what you're going to be left with is something that works well with spinach. <laughs> <laughs> and of course here you could use kale. The good thing about getting those greens in though is you're getting magnesium, you're getting iron, loads of good stuff in your body. Yeah, good for your immune system, right? Good for your immune system, we all need immunity. And of course, season to taste. Now check this out, we've just served it with a bit of spinach, but if you had some rice lying about, it would work really well with that as well. Look at how nice it looks, man. It's hearty, it's warming, it's literally steaming. <laughs> that is an absolute masterclass. Super easy, store cupboard ingredient. And a little bit of bread. Store it cupboard ingredient? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> store cupboard recipe. Oh, what's going on? Oh, hello. Alternate ending. Hummus! Hey. What? Well, this is madness. I mean, hummus is basically God's own food. It works with everything and it works beautifully with this. If there's one thing I can tell you about Ian, he loves a dollop of randomness. <laughs> so here's our shepherd's pie. Again, we're using the sun-dried tomato oil to add that flavour. Starting off with onion, just soften those onions down. A little bit of salt helps that softening process. Just make sure you don't burn your onions because you don't want those horrible little black bits. No, definitely not. Garlic, sun-dried tomatoes, rosemary, thyme. What more could you want? I know, maybe you could nip down to your local park and see if there's any rosemary and thyme there. Absolutely. You could. And dried works a treat too. Yeah. Now, carrot is something you can get in a tin. Yep. Um, or you can obviously use carrots from the supermarket and celery. And here we go with our mushroom meat. Now mushrooms is really good because they're super cheap, aren't they? Like you can buy a big tub for like a quid and then you blitz it up in a blender and you get mince and you cook it down nice and slow. Wonderful texture, exactly like beef mince. And here, you know, one of the things we like to do at Bosch is to layer flavors. We use yeast extract, tomato puree, balsamic vinegar to give that umami, give that real kind of almost meaty texture and flavor. Oh, a little bit of red wine. Now, if you put in red wine in your dish, make sure you put some down your gullet as well, because <laughs> at times like this, it's nice to have a little bit of something to warm you up. Those lentils are gonna add some much needed fiber and protein to make this a really like high protein and almost I would say filling dish. Yeah, definitely. You could use it out of a tin as well. They're like 30p from the big supermarket, so don't worry. Salt and pepper, not too much salt, just what you need. It will make everything taste that little bit better. And that's a filling done. Oh, look at that, that oh, was mate. easy. Now we're going in for mash. And of course, people know how to make their own mash. We like to have a load of dairy-free milk and butter in ours, because it just makes it more creamy. It's mm. perfect for this dish. Yeah, man. Dijon mustard as well, give it a nice sort of like silky yeah. tang. Um, mashed potato has to be one of my faves. Especially with mustard in it. Like the mustard's gonna add that peppery goodness to every single bite of this shepherd's pie. Oh, look at that pour, <laughs> top pour. Look, it, that is a, that's a lot of filling. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's loads there, you're not gonna go hungry. That's a very green spatula. 
Tesla. It's almost like radioactive. Isn't it? <laughs> right. Oh, look at that. It's a good sort of smoothing technique. Yeah. And make sure it's nice and even so the potato, which is here now, sits on top of it perfectly. Oh. Now you can do this bit however you want. Um, Ian will probably do smoothing and then get a fork. Yeah, see. This, yeah, you see, there's his smoothing and then he'll do the fork. Yeah. You don't need to do the forking if you don't want to, but it is nice to embellish it a little bit. And it sort of, it gives it nice crispy bits it as does, well. yeah. Which is cool. So that, yeah, so in the oven now for 180 degrees. And look at it, it comes out golden. <laughs> golden. I can see some peas there on the bowl. I'll uh, give peas a chance. Uh, it, <laughs> Ian loves peas with everything, whether it's a roast dinner, mm. shepherd's pie, he's always got some peas. But the thing is, a frozen vegetable as well. You'll have that in your freezer. Yeah. They cost not, not a lot, and they're really, really healthy. So true. Yeah. This is an absolutely wonderful dish for you to be cooking while you're chilling out at home, not allowed to go out. Mm. But to be honest, any time during winter, autumn, one of the cool months this is perfect on to hearty herby stew which is basically somewhere in between a soup and a stew is it a stew, a stew? i don't know Maybe, is it a yeah. stew comment that's for sure um so shallots because they're a little bit sweeter we've got celery carrot pinch of salt all mixed together what do we call that like the holy trinity the holy trinity absolutely or mirepoix mirepoix yeah. yeah or sofrito in italian that's right and now isn't that a nicely laid table there. Can yeah. you see all that beautiful styling? I think Kat or Charlie did a very good job there. A little bit of white wine is going to add some really nice sort of hearty flavour to it and vegetable stock. Of course vegetable stock is a great thing to be making while you're at home because you can use your leftover kind of chopped up bits of vegetable peel. Um, Dijon mustard, we love a bit of mustard. Yeah. Again layering those flavours is a really good way to make vegan food taste incredible. And we've used a dry bay leaf there which is because they're just as good as the, um, the fresh stuff and that's some potatoes so those potatoes are just going to simmer off in that beautifully. Oh man, I'm getting hungry just watching it. Again, lentils from a tin, cheap. Cannellini beans, you could use any beans. We really have selected these recipes just to make your life easy while you're hanging out at home. Maybe you have to freestyle a bit more than usual with ingredients. And definitely don't forget about your nutrition during this time. This is packed full of wonderful healthy stuff. Look at all that good stuff. Cavolo Nero now as well. A great rule of thumb while you're um, hanging out at home and deciding what to eat is just getting your greens in every single day. Yeah. And also you can think about eating the rainbow. Getting your reds, your oranges, your yellows, your whites, your purples and your greens in as much as you can. And you can get your frozen rainbow in too because obviously it's great fresh but if there's no fresh stuff available in the supermarket, if you've got some in your freezer, use it. Oh, that, oh man, that is so good. That's a decent one, that, isn't Look it? Look at that. Oh man. <laughs> Do you know one of the funny things about greens is just how much they disappear? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that was like two two or three giant handfuls and now it's just... It's just like a little, little, little bit. But yeah. you know, it's a um, good thing it's come in small packages sometimes. And uh, yeah, there's oh, lots oh, of really good stuff. This is amazing. Oh man, I, I cannot tell you how good that dish tastes. That was in our fourth book, third cookbook, Healthy Vegan, but the recipe's right there for free. Yes, we're nice like that. And we hope you're all looking after yourself. We want to make sure you're all good and, um, and kind of getting your nutrition right. Ooh. Next up, we have braised jackfruit chili. This one is incredible. We actually um, were inspired by Biff's Jack Shack, a street food place in London where we made this. Mm -hmm. He's such a good guy. And do you know what else is good? That spice mix. Just <laughs> a few different spices all mixed in together to cover over this one tin of jackfruit. Of course, jackfruit typically comes in a tin, at least in uh, the UK or the US, so you can keep that for ages. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use half of the spice mix. Don't make the easy mistake and put it all on there. We're putting it half of it over this jackfruit and then we're saving half for the chili later on. It looked really fleshy that, didn't it? It did, yeah. Mm. One trick with the jackfruit is to just make sure you pat it dry and get that briny liquid out because it doesn't taste great. Got some red onions in there again, and again, as Henry was saying before, a little bit of salt helps eke out all the moisture right from the get-go. Garlic, of course. Six cloves! <laughs> Six cloves Jeez. of garlic, we're going mad here. <laughs> we like our garlic, and again, the holy trinity, carrot, celery, onion, is gonna form the base, the mirepoix of this dish. I love this bit, this kind of pot cooking, just getting everything in there, taking your time, mm -hmm. maybe popping an audio book on, or chatting to your loved ones on the phone, really good idea. So there was the spice mix going in. We had a yellow pepper, a red pepper, and of course, a chili pepper, because we want that heat. And look at the color. Beautiful. There's so much color. That's the roasted jackfruit looking really good. And then some plum tomatoes. If you've only got chopped, that's fine too. Bay leaf, can't bay leaf it. Can't bay leaf it. Ancho chili is a little bit random. Um, don't worry if you haven't got that. It's a dried chili, but they do keep for ages. And then of course, the beans. Yeah. 
Again, remember to freestyle a little bit. It is okay to bend outside of the recipe. Use whatever beans you've got. If you haven't got beans, it's gonna be okay too. If you've got any beans at all, maybe not baked beans, I don't think baked beans <laughs> will work. But... Although they have tomato. Yeah, yeah. that's true, yeah. that's true. They've also got bucket loads of sugar, I was reading. It's like mad. Yeah, now that, that was a key point that we just went past, which was you remove the ancho chili and remove the bay leaf, because we don't want to bite into that. And that's solid set dress, that. Uh, what we're serving with a little bit of rice, you could use couscous, you could use um, quinoa if you've got it in, but rice I think here, perfect. Oh, nachos would be good here yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. Now this is from our healthy cookbook, uh, so you'll notice we haven't got any sugar going in there. Um, it's healthy, it's high in fibre, gonna be delicious. But you could always put a bit of maple syrup and dark chocolate to sweeten it. If you We've like. got some green on there with leaves, but if you've got some coriander lying around, sprinkle some of that on for a bit of colour. What delicious. What beauty. Biff no. would be proud, wouldn't he? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so. Look at that. Oh man, yeah, I could definitely. Is it lunchtime? Well, it here is. it's 12.53, so yes, it is. I think this might have to be on the menu later. It's always lunchtime in the box kitchen. <laughs> Next up, we have a treat. This is super simple, super easy. The Indian Spice Tomato Soup. Now, goodness me, we did a, a, one of our biggest videos to date was a tomato soup and it went wild on Instagram, wild on Facebook, so we thought we'd pimp it out even more and do this. Now, there's lots of cherry tomatoes there. Now, <laughs> if you can't get hold of cherry tomatoes, very understood at this particular time, you could probably use chopped tomatoes from a tin and it would work not as well, but it would still work, so just bear that in mind. One kind of thing you could do, which is a bit random, but you can buy tomatoes in bulk and then freeze them yeah. um, and get them out for this. Of course, we're pounding the garlic just to squish it, and that's gonna go in and roast as well, as well as that chili. So we're just adding flavor to all of this good stuff. Cardamom pods and cumin seeds, cayenne pepper. We said it was um, a spicy one, and yeah. this is gonna be spicy. Look at all this, and it's one tray. One tray, super easy, and we've actually been quite subtle with the spice here. It's absolutely gorgeous, mm. um, but just tone down the chili if you're not too keen on chili. That's right, and we roast them off for a little bit, and now we crack on. Again, we love a red onion here. Red onions are good because they, like regular onions, can sit in the bottom of your cupboard for a fair old while. Yeah. Balsamic vinegar for oh. tang tang. That's a high grade balsamic right there. We've gone for the, the expensive stuff, yeah. but you can use whatever you've got lying around. And that's just gonna make those onions incredibly rich and sweet and delicious. And there are tomatoes oh. back out from the oven. They were, look at how nice they look. Man, they look so good. Mm -hmm. Now at this point, we're gonna whiz it and blend it up. Now you can use a hand blender, yeah. you can use a, a kind of food processor, and you can leave it a bit more chunky if you like, but we're gonna go quite smooth. I think, you know what here, you could just roast off some sweet potatoes and pop them in and you've got a curry. Mm. You don't have to eat it as a soup. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. We should try that, yeah. curry soup. Oh, curry soup! Man, look at that! That is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah we went pretty heavy. Uh, hang on, is that? Yeah, basil. That's an interesting one. You could have easily put coriander on there as well because yeah. it would work with this flavour profile. Oh man, that and is just salt, gorgeous. some pepper. That is absolutely. Now, Ian would probably put some yogurt on there normally because yeah. he likes a dollop. Um, I probably wouldn't, but you absolutely have to have some bread with this one. Dairy free yogurt. Dairy free may, yogurt. May, of may, may I add? Please. Always. Yes. And that is a good looking piece of sourdough. If you want to make some sourdough, then that would be really cool too. My fave! Yay! <laughs> oh my goodness, it's time for hummus curry. Oh, it's bonkers, but trust me, it's <laughs> so good. So what's the inspiration behind the hummus curry part of this, mate? Well, I just wanted to make a creamy curry that didn't have um, coconut milk, because coconut milk can be quite expensive. Yeah. But if you make hummus at home, it becomes a lot cheaper, and it makes it wonderfully creamy. I so bet. it kicked off with some onions, some ginger, some chili. Cool. What's next? Oh, obviously. Obviously garlic. Now that garlic has been grated, which is one thing we like to do here. It's a re really easy way to do it, but it also makes the garlic really fine. It cooks really well. That was three, four spices, five spices. Uh, there in the show notes below or on the recipe on our website, a little bit of tomato puree. We'll we could sort of bring it all together. Look, it looks like not very nice there, does it? No, however, it's gonna get really nice. However. Chopped tomatoes, again, a really good staple from your cupboard, and a bit of water. Notice what we did there, we put the water inside the tin to get rid of all of those juices, of course, waste not, want not. And don't stress too much about the ingredients. You can freestyle the spices. We've just used some chickpeas, which are packed full of protein and fiber, but again, you can use what you've got lying around. Mango chutney oh. for a bit of sweetness. And here we go. Oh. Oh. 
madness. Absolute <laughs> madness. Look at this. Look at the way it's sort of uh, coming together. Because without the hummus, it probably would have worked. But look at it now. It looks like a korma. It's so much thicker, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Look at that. Great. Taste and always season. A good chef will always make sure the flavour is right before they serve. Whereas often home cooks don't bother. I know. And it just, it, honestly, it, it really adds so much. And spinach, because we need that iron, we need that green. It would just be a little bit orange and a bit meh. You could use cavolo nero or kale. Looks great, doesn't it? Or even some rocket would oh, work yeah, there too. Rocket, yeah. Watercress. Absolutely gorgeous. That's going to wilt down. You'll put loads in, you'll feel like it's too much, but it's going to look absolutely delicious. Oh, good set warm. dress, good set dress. That is nice. Good styling right there. And we're serving it with brown rice because obviously it's a way healthier than white um, and a little bit more. Oh, you man. know, for the win. You eat first with your eyes, so we always like to kind of sprinkle the herbs on top, and doesn't that look good? It does look very, very good indeed. And if you've got some um, some chapati flour, you could make some chapatis to go with this. It would be really delicious. That's good, man. Imagine the spices that went in. Imagine the creaminess of that hummus. Imagine the sweetness of that mango chutney in that dish. That is an absolutely wonderful one. And you can make it in a big batch, you can freeze half of it, and then you can eat it later on. In fact, that's true for every single recipe we just went through. Mm. They're really freezer friendly. That was fun. Um, we hope you've enjoyed that. We're boss, we're at home hanging out. We're not really allowed out in the UK at the moment. So um, we're gonna be making loads more videos like this to help you out wherever you are cooking really tasty food. We're also doing lots of Instagram lives at the moment as well. So tune into Instagram, we're at bosch.tv. Same on Facebook, same here on YouTube. Uh, see you guys soon. And don't forget, subscribe, let us know what you thought in the comments. Any other tips for people who might be wanting to uh, cook at home uh, in the middle of this mad time? And we'll see you next time.